everyone, today I'm here to share with you all the books I acquired in October. Yesterday was Halloween, so why not wear cat ears for this video? Can't decide if I am able to take myself seriously or not. I think they look cute, so we're just gonna roll with it. So, as always, I'm gonna start with the books I purchased, then go on to the books I got for a review, as well as the books I got in book boxes this month. There's a lot of them, so sit tight and hold on. Here we go. The first book I got is, of course, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, the illustrated version by J.K. Rowling. These are becoming a huge trend nowadays. As you can always tell, I have one in my background because I just adore them so much. I will say, I don't know which one's my favorite cover, but my favorite book of Harry Potter is behind me, The Prisoner of Azkaban. But The Goblet of Fire, of course, is no exception. It's beautiful. It's stunning. It was worth every penny. Um, I do plan to read these one day. I think maybe when my son gets older and he's old enough to appreciate Harry Potter, I'm going to read them with him, the illustrated version. But the illustrations are just stunning, as I'll say time and time again. They just are beautiful. I do know, I'm not sure if this book has been cut down at all because if you don't know Harry Potter is a relatively small series but when it gets to the fourth book that's when the books get really big so I've been worried about how they're going to do that for illustrated versions so they're going to have like a uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire part one and then part two because they're so massive so I don't know if they have cut this down at all from the actual original version if you know let me know but either way the illustrations are stunning I can't get over them and you know Harry Potter keeps always making a grab for my money and I let it go easily. The next book I bought, I've already actually read, and that is Someone We Know by Sherry LaPena. I read this for my Spookathon vlog, so if you want to check that out, I'll leave it right here. This is a, an adult mystery thriller. I don't want to tell you too much about it because you shouldn't know much going into mystery thrillers. Basically, it's about this neighborhood. We follow a plethora of people within this neighborhood, and a woman has gone missing and is found dead. Everybody's holding secrets, and you're trying to figure out who exactly did this, so it's kind of like your classic whodunit. I'd say if you really like Big Little Lies or, um, watching you by Lisa Jewell. I think this would be a great book for you because it's kind of that domesticated throw that I actually really enjoyed. This is my favorite Sherry Lepinia book I have read. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Would highly recommend it. And the last book I bought is Christmas Shopaholic by Sophie Kinsella. I bought this because number one, I love Sophie Kinsella. I will say that she's one of my favorite adult chiclet writers. She was kind of the first author I discovered when it came to adult chiclet and I still really enjoy it. Um, and it's a Christmas book and I'm just a junkie for that. If you don't know, I host Tis the Season a Thon, which is a Christmas themed read a thon, and it's coming up in a couple months. So I thought, hey, this might be the perfect book to read for that. Now, this is part of the Shopaholic series, and I have not finished the Shopaholic series. I think I've read three of the books, and there's like, I don't know, like seven of them. So, is this cheating if I read this book and I haven't read the other ones? I don't know, but I'm going to try to read it anyway. I don't think you're going to have to read the series. I'm probably going to bite myself by saying that. But I think hopefully I could put two and two enough together and read this book kind of out of order with the series. I don't have any desire really to read the other books in the series, but this one's Christmassy and I really like Becky Bloomwood, so I do want to read it, but hopefully I'm not like doing a bad decision by not reading the other ones and then reading this one. I don't know. Speaking of Christmas books, I got two sent to me for review this month and I am so excited about it. The first one is from Disney Books and then it's 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. This is about a girl that I think, um, Louisiana and she wants to be away from her parents, things like that. And then her boyfriend breaks up with her and her aunt or maybe her, oh, her nana. So her grandmother decides to, um, over the next 10 days, she'll be set up on 10 blind dates and it's all set during the holidays. I've heard really good things about this book and I can't wait to read it perhaps for a certain readathon. I'll keep hinting at that because I'm excited for it. But either way, it sounds adorable, it sounds Christmassy, and it sounds a thousand percent up my alley. This one Penguin sent to me, and that is Let It Snow, the movie tie-in edition. So if you don't know, Let It Snow is being made into a Netflix film. It should be out this month. I do not plan to watch it in November because I plan to reread this and watch it in December because I think it's going to be the perfect time to do so. Let It Snow is three short stories comprised by John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Lauren Miracle. I have already read this a long time ago, like when I first started booktube, I think within the first couple years I read Let It Snow and I really enjoyed it. but. It's been a really long time, so, and it's a quick read, um, so I thought I would reread it and then watch the movie, see how they fare out, see what I think about it, but all of these three stories kind of intersect at the end, they all kind of intermingle, and they're all set during the holidays, if you can't already tell by the cover and the title. I am really excited for the adaptation and hope it does really well, so I definitely plan to reread this in December and watch the movie. Then from Harper Teen, I have The How and the Why by Cynthia Hand. I am really excited for this book. I don't know if it's on a a lot of people's radars but it is on mine because I love Cynthia Han. I love um, 
her, I love her Unearthly series that's highly underrated. I love the Afterlife of Holly Chase. I just really enjoy Cynthia Hand books. And this one just sounds a thousand percent of my alley. It sounds very familiar to like a Robin Benway novel, like Far From the Tree almost. Basically, we have, this is set in two time periods. So we have a character named Cassandra and she has a loving family. She has a mom and a dad and she still wants some things. She wants to know who she is because she is adopted. She finds these letters that her mom actually wrote to her 18 years ago because she's 18 and her mom was 18 when she had her and basically it's a whole series of letters that her mom wrote to her when she was still in the womb of why she decided to give her up for adoption her life and things like that she wants to get to know to know her mom better so we have one timeline where we have Cassandra reading these letters and learning about her mom and we have set in the past where we actually see the mom writing these letters and learning about her life and things like that so I think that sounds like a really great book like on this side we have the mom who was pregnant and then we have the daughter 18 years later who was 18 so this sounds like a really hard-hitting contemporary book that I just can't wait to read and I really have high expectations for this if I'm honest with you because it sounds like a book that I will just love and adore so I can't wait to read it and check it out. Next up I have the paperback copy of The Great Alone by Kristen and Hannah. This was kindly sent to me by St. Martin's Press. This is the paperback version. I have read this book. It is right here actually and I really enjoyed it. I love Kristen and Hannah's books. You go, you guys know The Nightingale is one of my favorite books if not my favorite book of all time. I love that book and The Great Alone is no exception. So this book is told in 1974 and it's in Alaska. We follow this family that moves to Alaska because they're not really having the best time with life and they want to restart in Alaska and they move to a really desolate part of Alaska where the winters are very very brutal a lot of kind of bad things happen in the winter because it gets so dark there for such a long period of time and there's like no light at all and there's no sunlight and for all this family who realizes the brutalness is not just outside in like the weather it's inside of their homes. This book is hard hitting it's really good I loved it so much if you love books set in Alaska which I do this is a highly recommended book I, I loved it a lot so I'm excited to have the paperback copy of it. Then I have I was totally surprised when I got this The Lost Causes of Bleak Creek by Rhett and Link. If you don't know who Rhett and Link are, they make Good Mythical Morning, which I watch every morning. I finally discovered them a few years ago. I knew about them always, but I just never watched them. I don't know why. <laughs> and now they're a part of my regular morning routine. Whenever I'm getting ready for the morning, I watch Good Mythical Morning. It's just a fun stupid show where they do will it test on food or games and stuff like that. It's just a fun way to start your morning honestly and this is their first foray into like actual fiction. So this is told loosely on their hometown Bowie's Creek of North Carolina, Bleak Creek, and there's like the science fiction thing going on, people going missing, experiments. I don't really know. I just want to go into it not knowing anything but I'm excited nonetheless because I love Rhett and Lake and I'm excited for them and I really want to check out this book soon because I'm a mythical beast. I can say that right. <laughs> Next up from Avon Books, I have Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This book and cover is so adorable and this book also sounds amazing. So we follow Chloe who is a chronically ill computer geek and she has a chronic illness that she has to deal with. So after almost but not quite dying, she's come out with seven directives to help her get a life and she's already completed the first, finally moving out of her glamorous family's mansion. The next items, enjoy a drunken night out, ride a motorcycle, go camping, and do something bad. And then she meets a guy named Red who is a handyman and then she enlists Red in her mission to rebel and she learns things about him that no spy session can teach her. So basically it's like a love story but it's about a chronically ill woman and I think that sounds amazing because I haven't read a ton of books where it features a chronic illness so I'm excited that's getting represented and I can't wait to read this book because I've heard amazing things about it. Next up I have a beautiful book and that is an encyclopedia of Tolkien, the history and mythology that inspired Tolkien's world by David Day. This book is stunning like it's got beautiful illustrations all throughout it. It's got gold splayed edges and I mean I feel bad for having this because like I don't I've only read one Tolkien book and that was The Hobbit and I enjoyed it but I didn't love it. Um, but I plan to give this to my father probably because his favorite author of all time is Tolkien. Like I'm much Harry Potter fanatic. He's a Lord of the Rings addict. He loves everything Lord of the Rings and Tolkien so I will probably give him this because he will enjoy this a lot more than I will but until I see him it's gonna look pretty on my shelf for a while. But either way, this is beautiful and stunning. And if you love Tolkien, Tolkien or Tolkien, I can't ever pronounce that correctly. I'm so sorry. This is probably a definitely must read. So check it out for sure. Okay, these next stack of books, which I have a lot of, I don't know anything about. I just want to throw that out there. I try to be good about that. But this month kind of got away from me and I couldn't do research on them. So 
forgive me. The first up from Delacorte Press, I have The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. I don't know anything about this. I do know Christ Kirsten White. I have read a few of her books. Um, oh, it's about Princess Guinevere's Come to Camelot. So I'm guessing it's kind of like a Camelot retelling, maybe reimagining. I don't know. Then I got a couple books I have set from Simon Teen. The first one is Four Books in One, Year of the Wicked by Jeff Marriott. So we have book one, summer, book two, fall, book three, winter, book four, spring. I didn't think I was going to be interested in this one. It's about the seasons pretty much. I don't know much about it. Wh uh, Witch's War is Brewing and it's coming straight towards Carrie. I do believe these are books that were published a while ago, but they have since binded them up and reformatted and reprinted them obviously to, you know, kind of, you know, revamp them. I have looked on Goodreads. It hasn't had the best reviews, so if you know anything about it, as always, let me know. And the other one from Simon is Make Trouble, Standing Up, Speaking Out, and Finding Courage to Lead by Cecilia Richards with Laura Peterson. So I'm guessing, I don't know if this is a nonfiction book or not. Yeah, I think that she's, it's about a girl that's been an activist, and she, Cecilia Richards has been an activist since she was taken to the principal's office in seventh grade for wearing an armband and protest of the Vietnam War. So the, in this adaptation of story for young readers, she shines a light on people and lessons that have gotten her through good times and bads and encourage her to take and encourages readers to take risks, make mistakes and make trouble along the way. So this sounds really awesome and I definitely need to read it. Um, so yay. I love the cover as well. It's amazing. I have a huge stack of books from Epic Reads. They sent me a big old box full of books and I don't know what any other about. The one I am most anticipated that they sent me is Lucky Caller by Emma Mills. I love Emma Mills books. This is about a girl that takes a radio broadcasting class in her senior year and I think she meets a guy. I love MML. She writes this really cute, sweet, wide contemporary books that I just eat up honestly. Then the rest I'm just gonna show you because I don't know much about them. Defy the Sun by Jessica Fleck. I love the cover of it. Fence of Bones by June Hearn. I'm gonna take a wild guess this is a YA mystery thriller. Full Universes by Heather Demetriosis. I have heard of this author so I'm gonna guess this is like a hard-hitting YA contemporary book. Finding Mr. Better Than You by Shadi Petrock. I have read a book by her. This is gonna be a cute YA contemporary I'm gonna guess. The Shadow of the Sun by M. Castellini. I I'm sorry, I don't know much about that one. And lastly, the one I'm probably most least interested in is Dragon Hopes from Saul Leaps to Great Leaps. This, I'm guessing, is about basketball. This is actually a graphic novel. I apologize. It's a graphic novel about basketball. So in case you're into basketball, I would highly recommend this. I might give this to my nephew because he's into basketball. <laughs> Thanks so much to Fierce Reads for sending me this. I said Epic Reads. This is from Fierce Reads. I'm a horrible booktuber. All right, lastly, we have the books I got from book boxes this month. First up, we got two books in Alcrate. We got Crier's War by Nina Varela. This cover is everything. This is like a sci-fi world where we have two people kind of intermingling, I think. I don't know. Then I have I Hope You Get This Message by Farah Najrishi. This is about like the world's gonna end in seven days and we follow a plethora of teenagers and kind of they figure out what they're gonna do with their life. So a sci-fi and a contemporary all in one box. So I'll create very excited about them. Then I got the tenth girl by Sarah he by Sarah Faring in my unplugged box. I have heard not the best things about this book. This is like a YA historical mystery thriller where you have this haunted Argentina mansion, a family cursed, a twist you'll never see coming. Welcome to Vic Welcome to Vicara School. I don't know if I'm going to read this because the reviews have just been not the best. Lastly, I got three Book of the Month books. First one is Fate of the Fallen by Kel Cade. This is a fantasy and I, wa I got it because I'm reading a little bit more adult fantasy, you know, each year. I delve into it a little bit more. This one I thought sounded amazing. I don't know much about it. Not all stories have happy endings. That's all I know. And yeah, it's short, which I was like, I really appreciate for an adult fantasy. So I was like, I probably should check it out. If you know anything about it, let me know. I also have The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis. This is actually a YA book and it's told in Madrid, 1957. Really about that. She shines a light onto one of history's darkest corners in this epic, heart-wrenching novel. So it's about during the Spanish Civil War. And Ruta Sepetis writes amazing historical books and I know this one's gonna be amazing so I can't wait to read it. And she's long. And lastly I got What Happens in Paradise by Ellen Hildebrand. This is the sequel to Winter in Paradise which is actually lent out to a friend. She read it and she really loved it and she recommends it so I'm going to read that one. But first I'm gonna send her the sequel so she can read it herself and then when she's done with them I can read them both and have a great old time reading them. So there you have it. Those are all the books I got this month. A lot. Like I don't know how my TBR shelves are gonna take it but we're gonna try our best. Again sorry for the long video and sorry if you couldn't take me seriously because the cat ears. It was Halloween yesterday. That's my only excuse. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.